Hello, darlings. Let's say you have 24 hours in Montreal. What do you eat and do? Located in Canada's Quebec province, this French speaking city glitters with festivals and events, and it's only a one and a half hour flight from New York City. Montreal is rich with food and art culture, with plentiful options of poutine. This is what Montreal looks like in the autumn, but it was a beautiful snowy winter when we visited. We begin the day in Old Montreal, a historic neighborhood with cobblestone streets and quaint charm. By the way, Montreal in French is Montréal. Greetings from Montreal, Canada. It is another snowy day. Right behind us is Notre Dame Basilica. Ooh. Let's go in. Oh, my fingers are freezing. Entrance fee is 10 Canadian dollars. With the swing of a door, we soon lay our eyes on an architectural treasure. Built in Gothic Revival style, the aisle leads to detailed wooden carvings and religious statues. The details are just jaw-dropping. So beautiful and the color. Across the altar and above the entrance is a French symphonic organ with 7,000 pipes. To the side is a wooden pulpit. On ground level are sculptures of two prophets from the Old Testament. I am not religious, however I can't help but appreciate each careful detail. Lots of love and labor was poured into this space. Mamio needs her morning coffee. We walk about five blocks towards downtown. Located next to a Buddhist temple is La Finca Cafe. Natural light floods in. A stepped seating area awaits your booty. The menu is made up of letter cards. The menu continues with photos hung on a string. I am digging the calm and homey DIY vibes. Called Danois Déjeuner, the Danish lunch, this pastry is crowned with mozzarella, tomato, bacon, and chive. Cut through the sunny side up egg and spread it around like melted butter. Say no more, you like it. <laughs> uh huh, it's good. If there was no egg yolk on this, it might feel a little bit lowly and a bit more dry, but the egg yolk just tops it all off. Egg is like a gravy. Some edges are delicate, the others are more tough. The next place we're gonna go, some say they have the best croissants in Montreal. Someone's excited, can you tell? Up ahead of us is Chinatown. In Chinatown at the entrance, there's always a big gate. Oh, check out these seats! <laughs> nice! Wanna sit on a bench? Not today! The last time I had a really amazing croissant was in Paris, and that was over 10 years ago. Let's see if this one can beat the one in Paris. Oh, it smells buttery. That's a good sign. Because a buttery croissant is a good croissant. The croissant biologique that is made with organic flour. Natural croissant is the classic. It's a classic one. Oh my, look at the almond croissant. Chocolate pearls. They sell various chocolate and in the back there are people making chocolate. Take a look at these shapes. It looks so structured. It is scaly. Basically the shape is same as the classic croissant, but it's got almonds and the plate they serve it on is warm. Wow, did you hear that? Ooh, ooh. Deconstructing the croissant. I'm undressing. How are you gonna eat that now? You unwrap it and then you wrap it up again. I have to say though, the air here smells more buttery than the flavor of the croissant. I'm even more excited about this guy. I'm on paste inside of the croissant. The filling oozes out. Evidence of deliciousness. Which one do you prefer? The classic or the almond the croissant? I'm dessert person, but for croissant, I like just original croissant. I love almonds. So what do you think my answer is? That was too easy to eat. It may look sunny, but it is chilly. So yesterday we tried poutine at Chez Tuzignon. It was our first poutine ever and it was delicious. And right now we're heading to Chez Claudette. Supposedly we have really good poutine as well. It's Wednesday nearing noon. Stacks of dishes greet you at the entrance. Perfect timing. We have plenty of seats. I like how our table is right next to the door. 
They serve omelets, crêpes, and more. But we're here for the poutine. Poutine is basically french fries covered with gravy and cheese curds. Poutine is a tricky word. Although it's not spelled with an S, I've heard it pronounced as poutine, like this woman. They have 40 kinds of poutine. But we're gonna get the classic. There's even a pizza poutine and an Indian style poutine. This may be the small size, but it is plenty for us because we just had croissant. Some of the cheese is elongated from the heat. That's good. Mmm. Poutine we had yesterday is, is mainly. This is, is more, a little more delicate and less salty. The cheese. The cheese is not nearly as squeaky as the one at Chateau Zignon, but I really like the flavor of the gravy. For those who grew up eating poutine, how important is it for you that the cheese is squeaky? Flavor-wise, this cheese is gentle. You know, normally, I'm not a big fan of soggy fries, but this one has the gravy on it, so totally bearable because of the gravy. The poutine we had today and yesterday, they're both good in their own way. However, if I'm in a bad mood and I need some extra flavor, I will go with Chateau Zignon. Stronger flavors, use more of your senses, and that helps you take your mind off reality. But in terms of everyday eating, I would go with the uh, Chez Claudette. Every <laughs> time I will go to Chez Claudette. <laughs> Let's digest and walk to Librairie Henri Julien. Open since 1987, this bookshop specializes in buying and selling rare and out-of-print secondhand books. Bonjour. 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 Shelves overflow with novels as classical music plays in the background. Oh, it's Treasure Island in French. There is a dictionary from 1787. Oh, I can stay here all day. If I live around, I will come here every day <laughs> for a while. I'm going to get this book on Maxims. Winds pick up snow from the rooftops. Shimmering swirls transpire. I rarely see this, so it's a magical moment for me. So about a 15 minute walk is the Schwartz Deli. Now this place is a bit touristy, it's very popular, but you know what? Not every touristy place is a bad place. Sometimes there really is a good reason why it's so famous and popular. Fingers crossed there's no queue. I heard there's usually a line, but we might get lucky. 1.11 p.m. says the clock. It's a race against time because we gotta be at the art museum by 2 p.m. Sure, so we finally made it! And thankfully, no light outside. Oh, wait, this is for takeout? Wait, this is another entrance? Founded in 1928 by a Jewish immigrant from Romania, Schwartz is the oldest deli in Canada. Yes, it's over 90 years old, and they smoke meat the old-fashioned way. We got so lucky there is no queue today. Let's see. Enjoy. Upper slices of the seedless rye bread can't help but open up due to the ample amount of meat. It's made with a secret blend of herbs and spices. There's also mustard. They marinate this beef for 10 days, smoke for 8 hours, steam for 4 hours, lots of love, lots of work, wow, it's brisket. You can sit at the tables, but you could also sit at the counters. One medium, Johnny. Wow, good. <laughs> the bread is very soft. That meat just falls apart. Juicy, it'll make your hands messy, not salty. Yeah, it's not salty. There's a good reason why this place is famous. Every couple bites, there's fatty bits. They also sell poutine here, as well as ribeye steak and chicken. Oh, you could buy a whole smoked turkey. I heard usually there's like a long line here. If you want no line, you come in February on a snowy day. Summer months, longer queue. This place is still owned by Celine Dion. Mom I was a huge fan of Celine Dion when I was growing up. Every time my mom would pick me up from school and to school, Celine Dion, every single day. <laughs> the sandwich was 12 Canadian dollars with tax. 20 minutes to two. Let's hop on an Uber. Okay, so the shorts meat was really good, mm -hmm. but the bread, it's like, okay, you know, it's all about the meat. 
the flexibility of the bread allows it to hug the meat in place when you take a bite. And I also like how the mustard was not over empowering the flavor. Because sometimes when you put mustard in things, it's just like, wow, right? Loved it and would definitely eat it again. For full flavor joy, remember to order the medium or fatty meat. Introducing the Montreal Museum of Fine Art. Just met up with Maud and she's going to introduce the museum real quick. Well, the Montreal Museum of Fine Art was founded in 1860. It's the oldest in Canada and it's an encyclopedic museum, which means that we have everything from archaeology to contemporary arts. You will find decorative art, designs, fashion, paintings, sculpture, everything you want, we got it. This museum is 160 years old and has a collection of 43,000 works. It also has five pavilions, all connected through underground tunnels. Perfect for snowy days like this. Inside Le Salon de la Belle Époque, savor the works of Romanticism. In a nutshell, Romanticism emphasized emotion and imagination. Leaves sway on the wall. The golden frames against the nighttime backdrop is dramatic. Love it. During the early Middle Ages in Western Europe, the Catholic Church was the major sponsor of artistic work thus the abundance of biblical themes and religious portraits. I just learned that back in the Middle Ages, plucking the hairline, like making your forehead bigger, that was considered a beautiful thing. Walking through these rooms feels like flying through time. Some paintings I want to spend a solid hour with and dissect the details. There's also a room dedicated to Napoleon Bonaparte. Well, in French, it's more like Napoleon Bonaparte. So in front of the statue, we have a horse. And in art school, we used to sit on this all the time and draw. The decorative art and design collection contains over 6,000 objects, including furniture, jewelry, ceramics, glass, and such. There are multiple levels and so much to appreciate. It's not just the pieces in here that are interesting, it's the display cases. And the varying heights are as skyscraper feels. One of my favorite objects is this knitted chair. Looks like the footstool is on a leash. Merci beaucoup to Maud for giving us a tour in the museum. Mom, you and I are sticking around because there's so much to look at. And I'm gonna be drawing my sketchbook. Looking at all these pieces is inspiring me. I'm just like, oh, I'm getting all kinds of ideas right now. It's now past 5.40. It's been a couple good hours at the museum. A wonderful way to digest and take a break from all the eating. And now it's dinner time. We're gonna get peanut butter dumplings. Ooh. Ooh. The original plan was to check out Joe Beef, but they were completely booked. It's all good, we'll save it for next time. So I hear the Montreal pool room also has tasty poutine. Just made it to Chinatown. We are here for the peanut butter dumplings. This Chinese Canadian dish is a local specialty. It first made its appearance in Montreal during the 1980s. We had the option of getting the dumplings fried or steamed, and we ordered steamed. The outside is like that uh, peanut sauce you eat in Southeast Asia, and the inside is savory. The first thing I feel is that peanut sauce. It's a little bit sweet, peanutty, and then that melts away. And then what you have left is that dumpling. The ending flavor is the meat. Here's a basket of the dumpling surprise. Chef's choice and everything looks the same on the outside. So it really is a surprise with each bite. Forget the instructions of taking a bite then drinking the soup inside first. Mamio is making her own rules. She cuts open the dumpling and then grabs the filling first. Quite the opposite method. Okay, my turn. Tried to poke a hole and suck the soup but ended up French kissing the dumpling. Sometimes that juice can be scorching hot, so you gotta be a little careful. And that was a fail. It's okay, it's okay, life goes on. <laughs> that juice tastes mushroomy. The skin is a medium thickness. Enthused that we got to try the peanut butter dumplings. The rest of the dumplings were not to die for, but hey, always be thankful for all the food that you get to eat. We have the fortune cookie jar. Mamio got one. What is your fortune? Vous n'êtes jamais employé dans ce que vous faites. Actually, there's an English translation. You are never confused with what you're doing. That's me. In all honesty, you may not be confused with what you do, but sometimes I'm confused with what you do. <laughs> I think the camera's drunk already. <laughs> it's so blurry. The 
Tropic Thunder. That one's named after the movie. They sell various snacks as well, such as tofu, chili. I know what I want. Something with a coconut. A taste of the tropics on this chilly evening. Here are the ingredients in French. What is that one? Brandy, Remy Martin, and a croissant. Get ready for summer vacation in the mouth. Nom, 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 nom. Definitely tasting the pineapple in that. With each preceding sip, the flower sinks as the bar counter fills up. How did you like that bar? I like the atmosphere, young people. Are you sleepy? No. I feel like I'm sleeping on walking on uh, icy street. <laughs> walking on Notre Dame. We're gonna pass by the Basilica again. The place where we started at the beginning of this video. It all circles back. Ho ho ho, no way. It's not Christmas, but we approve still. Oh, they still have their Christmas decorations. Snowflakes and trees and Santa. More Santa. Eternal Noel, Eternal Christmas store. More Santa. Oh, mommy was ahead. Gotta catch up. There's a shop called Maison Bagatelle. Let's look at the inside. There's ice cream over there. Bonsoir, Basilica! Good to see you again! My hands are cold. I can't put my camera away. Bye. <laughs> Yay! We are home! Good morning! So currently it's 7 degrees Fahrenheit and actually this is a 24 hours in Montreal video. We didn't completely fill up the 24 hours. So today, we're gonna keep it local because it's really cold. Well compared to where we're from, it's very cold for us. We're located at Old Montreal, so there's a lot of cool stuff within walking distance. We ate a lot of bread yesterday, so today is veggie day! For breakfast is veggies from Jantelot Market. It is chilly and the streets are slippery, so we gotta be careful. Watch every step. Yo, look at all the snow piled up over there. Some areas taller than the fence. It is morning, so you know what that means? Mamio needs her coffee. Yeah. We're going to a cafe called Balance. We had a nice conversation with a gentleman who's serving the coffee. He plays a mandolin. And when we come back to Montreal in the warmer months, we're gonna check out his show. And just around the corner is lunch. Their menu is so cool. It's got a tiger in the front, signature salads. You can also create your own salad. Oh, they have coffee here too. They sell bulletproof coffee. How cute are these little graphics? A checklist for your custom salad. There are coloring pages and pens for kids. Here's a beat, dancing to beats. Mommy picked up some chocolate coconut chips. I already know this is gonna be real good. Very good. Got the superfood salad with house dressing. The pattern bowl contains quinoa, pomegranate seeds, and arugula. <sighs> Smells very minty. I never had a salad where they just put mint leaves on it. So a summary. It also has roasted sweet potato, parsley, tomato, spinach leaves, kale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's also apple and broccoli. Monochromatic but very nutritious. I'm so happy finally getting some veggies in the body. Life, it's all about the balance. You can't just eat bread all the time, you know? Finish your meal and the full pattern reveals. Wendy, we will come back. Two minutes walk away is the Fee Foundation for Contemporary Art. Currently on exhibit are works of Eva and Franco Matt. There is no admission fee. It's free. This is the one on the postcard. This installation is titled Befnod, which is an acronym for By Everyone, For No One, Every Day. A cable tray with ethernet cables snake through different spaces, wrapping around the elevator with no end in sight. And then it goes up. Took the elevator to the third floor and it continues. It's like it ends right here. Or maybe that's a starting point. Whoa, they cut holes in the ground for this to pass through. 
Oh, it's a bathroom. <laughs> we need to go to the other side. Three doors down, they have another exhibit. Look at that sheet of ice, just hanging off on the side. Up next, we soak up the works of artist Phil Collins, not to be confused with the singer-songwriter Phil Collins. Go in the room and play the record. It's well over 24 hours at this point, but there is this other restaurant that you might be interested in, called Café Barvi. The wooden interior with plants really make it feel warm and inviting. The leeks and vinaigrette are dressed in ricotta, mushroom, and smoked almond breadcrumbs. It's a little bit tart, and it is tasty. The strips of leek almost look like thick noodles. The rectangular pizza has big bits of kale, also contains sun-dried tomato pesto and goat cheese. So much cheese. When you take a bite, it's an avalanche of ingredients. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. There is so much to eat, see, and do here. We could not cram it all in this trip. And also because of the season, uh, in the warmer months, there's more festivities going on. So next time, we're gonna come when the sun takes over. I don't know when our next trip to Montreal is, but I already got my itinerary. And have you been to Montreal or Canada? What is your favorite place? Let us know. Hello darlings. It's early May as I filmed this part of the video and it's been months since we've been in Montreal. <sighs> Fell in love with that city and oh, yearning so hard to go back again. There was a request of a jacket review. Normally I don't do fashion stuff, but when you travel, depending on where you go and the weather, it's important to know what to shop for. It was winter when we visited and this jacket kept me so cozy. When I wore this jacket, zero times that my ears got cold and numb. And this area, it goes even above my lips if I sit up straight. I don't need to wear a scarf. It's tall enough so that it blocks wind. So you don't need as many accessories. And when you're traveling, the less things to pack and carry around, the better. Although I'm not vegan, I try to reduce the amount of animal products I use. So I avoid leather, whether it comes to bags or jackets, and fur as well. So this here, the lining around the hood is fall fur. Before I take this off, let me show you the length. The longer the better, because then it'll cover your legs from the winds. Um, but actually what I did in Montreal was I just layered up on leggings. The tightest one on first and then the little bit more loose one on second and then so forth. I kept layering. The colder it was, the onion. And the inside where the neck part is, that is a black velvet. The lining is 100% recycled polyester. TRF Heat Power Extreme. You can make it more tight. You undo this and then you put it in here. It's a little bit loose, right? Then you could tighten it. You could also detach the hood. Oh, you could just wear this one around. <laughs> if the weather turns out to be not as chilly, you could remove the hood. And then the black velvet area folds down. I hope you enjoyed this whole video. It took many, 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 too many hours to edit. It was like three to four hours of footage. Hope you enjoyed the pixels and wishing you guys continued safety and best of health during this pandemic. I still have a handful of travel vlogs I've never released before. Some of them take a very long time to edit. So stay tuned for those videos and I will see you next week or in two weeks. Goodbye. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. For food and travel in Korea, check out my other channel, Sweet and Tasty TV. Toodles, my noodles. Ooh, look at all that snow. We're beginning the day at Old Montreal. This is where accommodation is. You have mass times listed on here and also when it's open. Oh, Sunday 11 a.m. with choir and organ. It is very apparent we are no longer in old Montreal. The architecture looks more modern on this side of town. Can you tell the temperature difference from out here and in here? Camera lenses fogging up and my glasses are fogging up.
We wore so many layers, I feel super toasty right now. I see. When I press my fingers into it, oh, the thin layers of crispiness, you can hear it. We have rules to this table. No laptop, two people or more. Merci, thank you. We just learned that la finca means farm or coffee plantation in Spanish. There are random gusts of wind and then that picks up the snow that piled on the roofs and then it creates this like swirls. It looks beautiful, but if you're in it, it's like <laughs> snow facial. Plants blanketed in snow and shivering. Snow sitting on three benches, talking to each other telepathically. And now I'm craving shaved ice. Hello, I am Jolie. Got some crumbs over here. Chocolate making drum beats. This almond song is so delicious. Do, 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 do. Spontaneous song making here. If it snows again for one more night, it might cover the whole fence. We're a little bit pressed for time. I'm a little, whoa, puddles. It's co-owned by Celine Dion. Yeah? Yeah! <laughs> it's kind of like a building. <laughs> you got the walls and the floor. We got the dark neutralized red inside. And then the mustard is so vibrant. It's like edible highlighter. <laughs> This artwork is a planetarium from Jana Sterbach. Those are blown glasses and that's very quite difficult to do because that forma of blown glasses is pretty much the biggest you can go with that technique, which makes them very um, also heavy but so fragile. Why is it called Curiosity Cabinet? One thing that you could have like a place at home where you have a little bunch of artifacts like this thing from China, this thing coming from the bottom of the ocean, this thing coming from Egypt and that's you know very interesting and then you can talk about all your travel. It was Instagram before Instagram I guess. <laughs> <laughs> this one almost looks like a bagel holder. It was containing uh, gunpowder. This is bringing back memories from my architecture years. Building models, it's a lot of work. And sometimes, oh, it hurts your neck because you have to like cut things and paint. I feel like a drone right now. <laughs> Big piles of fresh pingsu. These are the books Mommy O got from the bookshop. This book is called Le Libraire, the library. There's a face on the bookshelf. As usual, I end the night with journaling. Less than a five minute walk away is an entrance to the underground city. I heard this place is connected by a couple metro stations. There's some shopping, restaurants, and hotels connected to this as well. If we want to get to the shopping area, it's going to take 30 minutes to walk underground. But if we walk outside, it's going to be 10 minutes walking. That's the Notre Dame Basilica. Now I understand why it takes 30 minutes to take this route versus going on street level and that'll take 10 minutes. Taking the indoor route, it's like we go up, down, <laughs> around, and I'm like, what, what? Are we facing east, west, or north, south? Like, what's happening? Uh, we came outside. <laughs> it's gonna be much faster to walk and less confusing.